Uh, today we are going to be doing a different kind of video as I'm going to be addressing the video slash kind of just ranting about the power scaling community in general. You might have already seen the video, but if you haven't, this essentially just goes in depth as to why power scaling is quote unquote cringe. It's kind of pointless and authors don't really care about it and we shouldn't either pretty much. Now, I think regardless of if you agree or disagree, this video is pretty entertaining and you should check it out yourself. And this video isn't me bashing on the creator, but I feel like addressing this video and talking about the general state of the community can kind of be done simultaneously. And maybe if you guys like this video, this could lead into different kinds of discussions being put on the channel. So, you know, why not give it a try? Now, the first main thing that was brought up in this video was how applying real science to certain feats just makes them look stronger than they should be, but I don't really agree with this, especially with the example he gave. The main feat he uses is when Joan Lean punches the meteors in Jojo Stone Ocean, but I feel like there is some context to behold here because he believes that, oh, well, how can Joan Lean do this? But, you know, a few episodes earlier, she could barely crack a coin. For one, she does get stronger during the fight, and it's just kind of a thing in JoJo's where resolve drives you to be stronger. You can't compare the Jolene who can't even punch away prison bars or crack coins to the one who's now punching the meteors. This is like saying Jotaro's best feat is him punching those diamonds, which isn't even true because he gets way stronger from that point, and that Jotaro wasn't even going all out. Along with this, saying that the author isn't intending on making someone that strong doesn't really mean they aren't that strong. And in Araki's case, the Meteor feat is in a similar tier to where other stands in JoJo are. We have Jotaro absorbing a stand that can generate a literal town of fog completely unfazed, and characters like Red Hot Chili Pepper can absorb the energy around all of Morio. It may not be what Araki was probably intending, like I don't think when he was drafting the story he's gonna be like, oh yeah, Red Hot Chili Pepper is gonna be town level, but that's just kind of where we're at right now, and unironically, it's pretty consistent, like, wait till bro finds out about the sun stand calc. All seriousness though, I feel like not being able to be curious about how strong our favorite characters are is a little cringe and kind of just using caveman tactics author has no intention on science so you can never use science author don't care about scaling so you shouldn't either like okay bro do you i guess i'ma still try and learn why chopper can solo jjk this leads into the second point that being favoritism which i mean just kind of applies to everyone on the planet everyone likes something more than someone else however there is a difference between scaling your favorite character and pushing an agenda take one piece for example zoro just so happens to be one of my favorite characters and i believe he's strong however because of this i am now a zoro tard and i'm pushing an agenda that contradicts everything i say and i just smell like shit. The reason why they lump me in with this group of people is because simply we are just scaling the same character. And I think out of any character in One Piece, Zoro scaling is something that's probably been speculated upon the most besides Luffy himself, as there's still people pushing the agenda that he's stronger than Gear 5 and Kaido. When not only does the narrative contradict that, but literally the series shows that Luffy and Kaido should be the strongest. Like, you can definitely say everybody's biased towards something, that's definitely not wrong, however, you can set your biases aside and scale something objectively. I do understand why this can be annoying though, but for most people, it's just like normie losers who ruin the whole concept of power scaling for people, like the people on the surface level. Uh, can he beat Goku though? Like, bro, can you beat your decade-old unshowered stench, aka your god key? Like, oh, uh -huh, Gear 5 has Toon Force, oh, uh -huh, Gear 5 is like Bugs Bunny, he could play, uh, B he could play basketball with Naruto's Biju Bob. Like, it's funny at first, but then everybody just kind of ruins it for people, but I feel like you can just apply that to literally anything. Like, trying to have a conversation with someone and you're just pushing an agenda or you're just, like, showing clear bias of something while the other is trying to have an objective conversation, it just kind of ruins the whole concept for people. And so it makes me initially think that maybe this was, like, the experience he's had with power scaling. But then, for me, the third point just kind of makes me very confused which is the whole who cares about strength like if your only experience with power scaling is with fat nerds on the internet then i get it but realistically it should not be such an issue to question how hard can goku punch like narrative and power are two clearly different things and the only ones who aren't going to get that are 12 year olds who have iron golem shaped stomachs and are huffing and puffing in their mom's basement spamming oh but can he stop gojo's infinity the whole idea of it is fun but like with many good things come the drawbacks it's pretty much the same idea as getting into a 
a popular franchise that has a terrible fandom like my hero or star wars like obviously there's the dingleberries who ruin it for everyone but then there's also the people who make it a fun and interesting conversation to have and not for nothing without this power scaling shit, i probably would not be at where i am today because you know i got y'all however i can say one thing and that it does still kind of suck nah i'm kidding but this video to me it just kind of comes off as not really controversial and kind of just talking about the surface level of things within the community because it gets very much worse with the majority of discord debaters raiding other servers harassing people more than likely half their age doxing or doing anything they can to ruin people's lives and even if you just want to look at it from a youtuber's perspective you have a bunch of comments no matter who's the victor they just can't win harassing creators like this community is one of the more toxic ones for sure however the things that were talked about here weren't really looked at with a clearer lens in my opinion like i said it's just more of surface level stuff but i don't necessarily disagree with it shout out to this guy for dropping a banger so i could drop this one and pretty much explain to you guys that power scaling isn't really cringe it's just that there's the minority that ruins it for others 